forces and ready. So there's this video about the Large Hadron Collider that asks this question. If I put my hand in front of the beam at the Large Hadron Collider, <laughs> what would happen to my hand? Cute question. But the answers seem to vary between burning a hole in your hand and blowing it off. The energy stored in that beam is about 300 uh, megajoules. That's like the energy of an aircraft carrier moving at 11 knots. So I have thought, maybe they'll just shoot through, but, but it seems to me that what's got to happen is this energy has all got to be dumped uh, because it's now hit, hitting a lot of matter. It, normally it doesn't hit anything. It's, a real, it's a, almost a total vacuum in, the, in those things, in the, in the accelerator ring. But now there's a, this big high density region. And so all these particles, it seems to me, will just hit in there and just start bombing out. So that's why I thought it might be a bit more dramatic than a little pinprick going straight through you. So I thought I'd give a more hmm, accurate description of what would happen if you tried to put your hand in the beam of the Large Hadron Collider. Then an accidental overdose of gamma radiation alters his body chemistry. And now when David Banner grows angry or outraged, a startling metamorphosis occurs. From this day forward, I shall call myself Radioactive man! So that's how it happened. I would have thought being hit by an atomic bomb would have killed him. Now you know better. Well, ignoring the silly stuff, in the first instance, you need to know what damage a near light speed proton can cause. That is, you need to understand how radiation damages living tissue. Your body is basically made up of nuclei in a bound state held together by the strong force which is surrounded by electrons in a bound state, which form molecular bonds, with these latter two being held together in a bound state by the electromagnetic force. All of these structures have bound and free states. That is to say that the energy of the molecular bonded state is lower than the free state. As with these magnets, the more stable state is when they're close together. However, if I put energy into the system, I can create the free state. Now the energy yardstick we're going to use in this case is called the electron volt. It doesn't really matter what it is, but just to give you some sort of rough perspective, the typical bond energy of a molecular bond is about 5 electron volts. And to make it even simpler on ourselves, let's just call that an electron volt. So I'm going to represent that as this square. So to break up this water molecule, we'll take about an electron volt-ish. Now, if I take that same oxygen atom that's left, and I want to strip all of the electrons off from the nucleus, that will take the best part of a thousand electron volts. However, that's still small potatoes. You have to get up into the upper million electron volt region, that's the mega electron volt region, before you can overcome the very short and very strong, strong force that actually holds the nucleus together. And at that point, you're in the atom smashing regime. That's where you can blast your nuclei apart. That's, of course, if you can hit them. Bear in mind that the nucleus is tiny compared to the size of the atom. That is, if you were to look at, say, a target oxygen atom, your chances of actually firing a line through that atom and hitting the nucleus are something like one in a billion. However, there's another important thing to bear in mind here, and that's which force you're interacting with. Charge-charge interactions are governed by the electromagnetic force. You know, like electrons being held to nuclei or molecules being held together. And it's a relatively long and relatively weak force compared to the relatively short range and relatively strong, strong interaction that holds the nucleus together. Okay, so now you have this feel of the orders of magnitude of the various energy states within this system. So why is radiation dangerous? What's it going to do to me if I get hit by a very high energy particle? Well, let's say I get blasted with radiation. What happens next? Well, it turns out that I'm mostly water, which means that most of the interactions between the radiation and me are going to be with the water. And that creates reactive species that drift around in that water and react in pretty short time with almost whatever they come in contact with. 
and it turns out a relatively small amount of damage like this can lead to cell malfunction or cell death. This is the effect of over a period of hours to days of dumping a lot of dead cell contents into your bloodstream, and your body needs to cope with that, and it also needs to weed out all of the malfunctioning cells. If enough cells are damaged or destroyed that your body can't cope with the after effect of this, then you die of radiation sickness. Typically, if you survive the first couple of weeks, you will get completely better, albeit with a significant chance of dying from cancer at a later date. However, if you get blasted with much higher doses of radiation, all those reactive species will destroy your nerve functions and you'll die in seconds. A few orders of magnitude higher energy flux and you'll get instantly cooked. A few orders of magnitude higher still and you'll evaporate. A few orders of magnitude higher than that and you'll turn into a plasma and a few orders of magnitude higher than that, and there won't even be any nuclei left for the worms to chew on. So what's the deal with cancer then? Doesn't radiation cause cancer? Well, yes, but the hazard is very different from radiation sickness. With radiation damage, it's the lack of your body to deal with the cell death fallout that kills you. The cancer risk is basically if your DNA gets damaged and causes the cell to malfunction such that it keeps reproducing uncontrollably. With the cancer risk, it really doesn't matter if you get this radiation exposure over a long period or a short period. The chances of cancer scale linearly with your exposure. So, delivered to one location, one big whack of radiation is exactly the same cancer hazard as a long, slow dribble of radiation to the same location. In rough terms, if you get blasted with a, a sievert of radiation, that's about the background radiation you get exposed to in a few hundred years in, say, for instance, a few minutes, that means you have about a 10% chance of dying from the radiation sickness. However, if you survive, you will also have about a 10% chance of getting cancer afterwards. Obviously, if the dose is over a longer period of time, then there is essentially no hazard from the radiation sickness, but the chances of getting cancer stay exactly the same. Right, so now you know how radiation does damage. So what will a, a trillion electron volt, that's a tera electron volt proton do when it hits you? You see, the damage that a beam does to you basically scales linearly with the number of chemical bonds that you break. Now you will recall that the chemical bonds were on the EV range, whereas a single proton in the beam of the Large Hadron Collider contains a trillion electron volts. So where's the problem I hear you ask? Trillion electron volts, trillion bonds broken. Regrettably, it's not that simple. If it were, and the beam did just stop when it entered your hand, the momentum transfer alone would just rip your hand off. However, that's not what would happen. You see, the faster things go beyond a certain threshold, the less strongly they can transfer energy to whatever medium they're going through. And maybe the simplest example I can give of this is these steel balls rolling past these magnets. The interaction between these two particles is exactly the same in both cases. But if the particle is moving slowly, all of its momentum is transferred to the substrate that it's moving through. However, if the particle is traveling quickly, it transfers relatively little of its momentum to the medium that it's traveling through. Yet in both cases, the interaction force between these particles is exactly the same. The only thing that has changed between these two particles is the time that they had to interact with each other. The faster you move, the less time you have to interact. Now, it turns out that the protons that they use in the Large Hadron Collider are also used, albeit with about 10,000 times less energy for cancer irradiation therapy. So there are actually figures on proton penetration at these sorts of energies. So here you have the figures for two proton beams, one with about 100 million electron volts or MeV energy, and the other with about 200 MeV energy. Now, both of these beams are isoenergetic. That means that they have exactly the same amount of energy in, say, two 100 MeV particles versus one 200 MeV proton. Now, bear in mind, like I said earlier, what does the damage is breaking the chemical bonds in the EV energy range. So give or take, one of these particles has enough energy to break about a million chemical bonds before it's stopped completely. As you can see, the particles hit atoms and then they slow down, which means they can interact more strongly as they're now moving slower. And what tends to happen is that as they move slower and slower, they dump more and more of the fraction of the energy that they have left. 
And this is one of the reasons why it's liked in radiation therapy. And this allows you to actually target the depth of the irradiation by the energy of the incoming particle. Now your hand's about 25 millimeters or one inch thick, which means that two 100 MeV protons will do somewhat more damage than a single 200 MeV proton, which basically means that a 200 MeV proton will just take most of its energy, go straight through your hand and take most of its energy with it when it leaves. Now bear in mind that the Large Hadron Collider protons have well over a thousand times as much energy as this example. So I would expect most of these protons to just go straight through your hand in that they just can't interact enough with your hand in that the time that they have to pass through it. Right, so equivalent energy for equivalent energy, you are certainly better off getting hit by one trillion electron volt proton rather than a million million electron volt protons, even though both contain exactly the same amount of energy. So proton for proton, I'm not sure, but I suspect that your hand getting hit by a single Terra electron volt proton would do a similar amount of damage to a million electron volt proton. However, this is not the full story, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to continue this in part two.